I good? Yeah. Welcome to Southern Range Cowboy Church. I'm um, glad to be here. I am. Anybody else? Yeah. yeah. Ah, it's good. It's good. Hey. Now, let's see. I got to see. What else? What do I got? I got some announcements. I know one. We went and had, well, first of all, if you're visitor, guest, whatever, we're glad to have you. You're not guessing more than any part of us. But I, I feel like i got to explain a little bit. We, we, we kind of believe a little different than, I don't know what, but you'll figure it out. But anyway, we went and, and had church at Perks last Sunday. Remember, we had a big old awesome time, and that's our second time there, and they even want to come back. So, you know, a lot of times you go for preach radical like we do, and they... But they want us back, so it's going good. It's catching on, and yeah. I said that to say that, you know, it's, it's uh, getting out. It's getting out. It's catching on. It's uh, life changing, and you can't stop it. And I uh, uh, said all that to say this Sunday, if you don't go nowhere, if you go to church somewhere Sunday, go there. We're, that's fine. If you don't go and you want to go, this Sunday we're going to go share this message at High Point Church in Marion. That is, uh, we want to, anybody wants to go with us, we like to make a big splash. The more the merrier, the more the power. Hey, the more candles you carry, the brighter the light. Amen. I know they always said there's no, there, it's not about numbers, but those guys got a little church. But there's power in numbers. So if you want to go with us, it's High Point Church. Uh, if you go from here, you're going to go up 37. When you get to Old 13, you're going to turn and go to the square with me. It's between 13, not 13, 37. It's between 37, this is 37, and the square. High Point Church. 10 o'clock. All right? The old motorcycle shop. That's right. Yeah, the old Harley shop. All right? Don't go with us. It'll be good. It'll be good. Uh, let's see. What else was I going to tell? Can I tell about your deal? You, don't be looking around you. Okay. Can I tell that? All right. Uh, I'm just going to share with you because we don't spend very much time talking about stuff or whatever. We come in here for an hour and we're going to keep it an hour and we're kind of short to the point, so there's a lot goes on that we don't always talk about, but remember, oh, a few weeks ago, I told about Miss Marilyn, remember, I'm right, going back up even further, right, the Thursday before Thanksgiving, Thursday before Thanksgiving, remember when we talked about headaches, we talked about getting healed, and we believe, that we believe God wants you healed, and the more you get out of religion and get close to God, then, then the power of God starts working and, and people, and people get healed. I told you about Miss Marilyn getting healed, having headaches every day since 2008 or something. Well, Miss Kate had them healed. Miss Kate, tell me again, fifth grade or something? Second or third grade. Had headaches that would put her in the bed and be there all day, and I can't even tell, I can't even explain to you how bad they were. Bad. Doctors couldn't help her. I'm, I mean, been in bed for days. Amen. No more headaches. Yeah. yeah. Heard something and believed it. Heard something and believed it. Feels good to be without headaches. If you hadn't had a, if I'm not going to say how old she is, but. Second or third grade was a while ago. <laughs> you've had a headache every day since then. I'm going to tell you, you're going to appreciate not having one. Amen. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> no, well, I just like it. That's the gospel. That's why I came, to give us life. And, and you know, hey, we believe, in, we, believe, we believe he wants you healed. If you want to know more about that, you can ask me later, because I'll talk about that all day long if you want to. It doesn't seem lots of people healed. I'm not trying to be convinced no more. Anybody in here been healed? 
Yep. yep. Raise your hand. If you've really been physically healed, I, I mean, raise your hand here. Keep them up. Keep them up. <laughs> hmm? You think we believe in it? Yeah. If you want some of it, you can get it. <laughs> it's going to get. I'm supposed to be doing the now since I know, but you're going to get me going to be in the I'm telling you, it's good. It's why I came. Yeah. That's good. right. I won't get on it right now. All right, let's, let's see. Do I got any more announcements? Sit. What time is Sunday? 10 o'clock Sunday. Yeah, it's going to be good. We're, we're starting to... Uh, I don't know. Everybody all right? Yeah. yeah, buddy. We're starting to, uh, I, I just share with you, I just, uh, the third Thursday in January, I think, third Thursday in January will be four years we've been meeting right here this morning. Yeah! And we, we believe in the pure gospel of grace. Amen. And uh, that has set us free and changed our lives, and that's what's got us healed, and that's what's got us out of condemnation and fear and religion and all of that. And so it's, uh, you know, for a while they said this was a fad, but I think we're not a fad no more. I think we're changing the world. Amen. And, and uh, one of the reasons that we've stayed on Thursday night and not went to Sunday is one reason, because they think a successful church is supposed to be on Sunday. So, we just be on Thursday. We, you know, there was still the same. That's right. And so, but another reason is because we want to, we're not out to build a big kingdom of our own. We want to get, we want to get this gospel uh, uh, started in our own lives and established to where we're established in the real gospel of Jesus Christ, not the gospel of that's another gospel. That's law and religious. People are fed up with that. And so anyway, we're getting established. Four years now. Now it's happening again. We're going back down into those churches and injecting life into them and going to raise them back up and bring them back to life and get them back on what it's supposed to be about. I think that's awesome. I, I, I said I think that's awesome. Yeah. 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 Because we can get everybody in this meal. I don't want everybody in Pulley's Mill. I like Pulley's Mill small. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to raise up grace preachers out of here. We're going to raise up grace pastors out of here that's going to go pastor them churches and teach people what love really is and who Jesus really is and what He's able to do. And I'm telling you, it's happening. Amen. It is happening. Yes. You're going to have to get on board or get out. Or sit in the back and tremble if they want to. Because we're coming. Yeehaw! I better sit down. Let's pray. Let's pray. Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we just thank you so much for how good you are and how strong and powerful you are. Thank you for your love. Thank you for showing yourself to us. Thank you for tonight. Thank you that you're willing and able. And I just thank you for touching our lives. And tonight that you just make yourself big and strong and show yourself and heal hearts and minds and bodies and do whatever you want to do. And we thank you for it. It's in Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Alright. Everybody good? Yeah. Alright, if it's alright with y'all, I'm just going to go right on from last week, alright? Bring it on. <laughs> if you didn't get last week, hey, if you didn't get last week, listen. Or if you, if you want to know about what got rid of their headaches, Miss Rosemary puts all these services, they're videoing right now, all these services are on YouTube. You can go to YouTube. You got busted last week, right? <laughs> I got this mic on. You preached about me? No. <laughs> no, you preached about love. <laughs> you said my name a few times. <laughs> I told you she'd find so out. <laughs> It's 15 oh. years. <laughs> anyway, YouTube. Yeah, YouTube. Uh, search YouTube if you know YouTube. Some of you I can tell don't know YouTube, but if you know YouTube, you can uh, search Southern Range Cowboy Church and all messages on there. The one about your headaches is called Sow Seeds. 
get on there and watch that. Uh, last week's called The Dogs. You can get on there and watch all them. That's good. That's good. But now, if you don't want to get healed, don't be watching it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Let's good. see. I want to read you something. I want everybody to say this with me. This is about, well, let me read this first. I'm going to read you. I'm going to read you one, and we'll go to another place, and we'll just go, all right? Everybody good? Yeah. All right, this is, this is 1 John 4. 1 John 4. And you know, we're, I'm, on, I'm on a quest, you know, right? I'm on a quest. Am I all right? Sound okay? Yeah. Good. All right. I'm on a quest. Uh, I'm, I'm, you know the journey we've been on. I'm on a quest. I want to know, I want to know love. I want to know more about love because that's what's changed us. And really, really, if we'll be honest about it, we've really not known what love is. I know we say I love you and all that. We've, we've, we've kind of thought we know what love is. But really, if we want to compare what man's kind of love is to God's love, we really have missed it. We've not really understood what love really is. And, and, the, and the way I read this, you, and you've heard what I've been living in and talking about and trying to learn and getting for ourselves and what's changed our lives is is really coming into the understanding and the knowledge that God loves us. And not that He just loves us with our kind of love, but He loves us unconditionally. Amen. Yeah. Unconditionally. That means it's not based on conditions. That means it's not based on whether you had a good day today or not. Guess what? If you messed it up today and you blew it, He still loves you. That's right. And so that kind of love is what I, uh, what I, I just want to know that. Because, you know, Peter said that grace and peace is multiplied to you. Amen. Grace and peace is multiplied to you. Now, grace, you know, grace is unearned. It's undeserved. You can't deserve it. If you deserve it, it's not grace. That's right. It's unearned. You can't earn it. That means... That means how do you get more of it without doing something? If you're doing something to get more of it, then you're earning it. And that's not grace. That's just wages. You go to work on Monday and you serve to your time and put in whatever you're doing. And on Friday they give you a paycheck. That's not grace. You earned it. That's wages. Grace is not earned. It's not deserved. And so if it's going to be multiplied and I can't do anything to multiply it, how in the world does it get multiplied? That's a fair question, ain't it? Here's what he says. You can look it up. First Peter, maybe first Peter, maybe second Peter. Second Peter one two, I believe it is. It said grace and peace is multiplied to you through knowledge of God. Grace and peace is multiplied to you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Grace is multiplied to you by knowing something. All right. Knowledge of God, right? Knowledge of God. You got that? Listen to this. 1 John 4, 15. Whoever, whoever, whoever. Does that leave anybody out? Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in Him. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't want to make that so simple that we miss it. <laughs> Say it again. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, I know it, it. I know we've heard it's a lot harder than that. Whoever confesses, I'm reading now the Bible. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. That's good. I can handle that. We have come to know and have believed. The love which God has for us. God is love. Everybody say, God is love. God, God is God love. love. And now you know some scripture. If somebody later on asks you if you know any scriptures, you can say, God is love. <laughs> God is not like love. Not God, it's not, God is not, it doesn't say it's about love. It's not, it's, God is love. Amen. God is, is love. Alright, you got that? And the one who abides in love abides in God. God abides in Him. By this You've heard me read this before. By this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Confidence. You can have confidence. You know, I've met people that's that's been in church their whole life on their deathbed and really ain't sure, well, ain't sure if they're going to make it or not. How 
not sad. Amen. Very sad. This says you can have confidence. You know why you can have confidence? Because you're getting in by His love. Not because you've performed good enough. That's right. That's right. Not because you've acted a certain way. Right. Not because you've got your act together. That's why you can have confidence. If it was about you and acting right, then you better go on right. You better be afraid. <laughs> I better not stay on that. I'll, I, can, I can stay right there. All right. So let's see. Listen to this. By this love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as He is, capital H, as He so is, you know who capital H is, right? So also are we in this world. I could stay there too, but I'll move on. There is no fear in love. Nope. But perfect love casts out fear. That's right. Because fear involves punishment. And the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because He first loved us. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. All right, let me move over here. God is love, right? God, yep. is, God is love. Yes. God is love. God is love. It, it even says in there, you know, if a man... If a man uh, how's it go? If a man says he loves something, if a man hates his brother but says he loves God, he's a liar. And you know, I used to think, I used to read First John four and say, "Oh gosh, if you don't love perfect and this and that, you're going to miss it. You're not going to make it." He, he ain't referring to that at all. He's saying, "Look, God is love, and if you're going to really experience God and, and experience love, you 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 can't help but be changed and have love and start understanding what love is." With me, all right. Because here's the thing. Here's I'm gonna I'm gonna tip over a whole bunch of sacred religious cows tonight. Is that all right? <laughs> if you're not if you're not if you're not been here very much, when I refer to religion, I'm not referring to it as uh, something positive or desirable. Okay. I really believe you. Okay, you ready? I really believe that the devil himself is behind religion. Yep. Amen. Now, and religion is anything that, that man can say that we've got to do to please God. Religion is man's way of trying to come up with something that he can do to, to get God to move or to get God to do something or, or to make God happy. And I think the devil's behind it because anything that he can point you to to get your eyes on you is getting your eyes off of God. Yep. And he did the work. He finished it. I'm not religious no more. And, and so this is going to... I say religion is about like pulling an a, a infected tooth. I'm going to pull some infected teeth tonight. You might squirm and you might squeal at me and you might have to tie you down on the bed. But when we get done, you're going to say, Man, I didn't know how bad I was hurting. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Listen to this. This 1 Corinthians 13. This is called that you people refer to it as the love chapter. And you hear it in weddings a lot and all this and that, but I'm gonna go at it, okay? This is love. If we really see what love is and who love is, we'll go running. We'll come running. Alright? Listen to this. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I have become a noisy gong. Or clanging symbol. I, I'm going to read a little of this and I'll come back and give you Jason's in, in, interpretation, okay? If I have the gift of prophecy and know all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to feed the poor, and if I surrender my body to be burned but do not have love, Prophets mean nothing. All right, it says if I. All right, you ready? <laughs> Let me tell you what that says. You can speak in tongues. You can have such a great faith as you can move mountains. You can be the biggest giver in any church and have the biggest offering that there is. And you can. Well, it says it like this: know all mysteries and all knowledge. I, I say you can be a know-it-all. Religion will kind of turn you into a know it all. Have all you can you can have all that and not have love, you've got nothing. You can be religious, speak in tongues and all you can move mountains, you can see this 
you, you can, without love, that's right, <laughs> nothing. Hmm. Amen. I think about the place where Jesus said, in that day, you come to me and say, didn't I cast out devils in your name and do all this stuff in your name? And he says, I never knew you. That's right. Hmm. But now when I, when I got out of religion, I started bringing my brain to church. I started bringing my brain to church. So I, listen, I'm not against all those things. You'll say, well, are you against all that? No. I'm going to use my brain. If it says, if I do all this stuff but don't have love, it profits me nothing. But I'm going to turn it around. If I do have love and have all these things, it's going to profit me a whole bunch. Amen. Yeah. So maybe what I'll focus on or what we ought to focus on is love. Yeah. And with love comes all this stuff and we're going to profit a whole lot. That's Does right. Does that make sense? Yep. All right, here we go. I said all that to get to this. All right, verse 4. Listen to this. God is love, right? Yes. Say it with me. God, God is, is love. love. Y'all know the Bible. It, this here, this is what it says. Verse 4. Love is patient. Love is patient. Well, if love is patient and God is love, then God must be patient. That's right. Hmm. God is patient. Yes, He is. He's not in a huge hurry. I can remember. I can remember religious. I can remember in religion where we was in a hurry. I can remember they tried to use fear and hey, you might get killed on the way home. God is patient. Remember last week? You might be laying under the bush. Remember that? Yeah. I, I've heard of people, we were just talking this week, I forget who it was. I've heard of people lit, lit, in their 90s laying on their deathbed, breathing their last breath, and confess Jesus is the Son of God and make heaven their home. Yes. Now, Jason's probably not that patient. I say, you thumbed your nose up at me your whole life and you think now in the last second I'm going to let you in? God is love. Love is patient. Yes. Can you imagine a God that that's good, that's that good, that's that patient? Hmm. He ain't in a hurry. He ain't stressed out. He ain't sweating. Listen to this. Love is kind. Love is kind. I know some people that, that have all this stuff up here that I read earlier. Faith to move mountains. Know it all. All that stuff. The snottiest, hatefulest, rudest people that I ever did meet. Yep. Religion will make you mean. Love is kind and is not jealous. Love does not brag, is not arrogant, does not act unbecomingly. I tried to look up unbecomingly. I can't even find that in the dictionary. <laughs> I don't even know what unbecomingly is, but whatever it is, God ain't unbecomingly. Alright? <laughs> it does not seek its own. It does not seek its own. Love does not seek its own. God does not seek its own. Now, I got to thinking about this because we all want to know the question, what's the purpose of life, right? So what's the purpose of all this? What's the purpose? What's the purpose of this? What, what's our purpose? What's the purpose? Well, you know, uh, oh, well, we're just supposed to uh, get saved and serve God and be a bunch of servants and hope we make it one day. But... 
I think about way back in the beginning when God created everything and He created man. And why did He do all that? Why did He set all this up? So that the devil could come in and, and torment us for our whole life and then finally He'll get fed up enough and feel sorry for us to come in here and wipe everything out? I don't believe that. What was the purpose? Why did He do it? Why did He do all this to begin with? For some ego trip or to so he could. It says it does not seek its own. Did he do it all for him? Or did he do it all for us? Hmm. The purpose of all this might be for us. Love does not seek its own. God does not seek its own. He didn't do all this for him. He did all this for us. I'm just provoking thought, alright? It's not... Uh, listen to this. Maybe I shouldn't provoke thought. Read on. It does not seek its own. It is not provoked. It says it is not provoked. We've learned... We've learned all kinds of ways to provoke God. Oh, if we fast, or if we pray, or if we give, or if we read our Bible, if we study, or if we quit this, or if we quit that, we'll provoke God into blessing us, or, or provoke God into doing something. We've, we've become a big, bunch of big provokers. Hmm. Love does not provoke. Is not provoked. Love is not provoked. You can't provoke. You, you can't do anything to provoke love. He already loves you before you do anything. He already loves you before you even show up and do whatever wrong. He loved you before you got here and did anything. Right or wrong. Listen to this. Now I'll probably get stuck here. Love does not take into account a wrong suffered. Who's got another? Who's got a Bible? What, what kind you got? What flavor is it? NIV, what does it say? Keeps no record of wrongs. Somebody got another? What you got? You got all of them, ain't you? Anybody else got one? Y'all are just trusting me? What you got? What kind? What flavor is it? King James. Let's see what old King James said. Verse five. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. No record of wrong. I should hear a great big sigh of relief, and here's what I should hear God is love, right? Love keeps no record of wrong. God keeps no record of wrong. Yeah, you better. <laughs> you know that, what you've done today? Ain't on record. I don't know if I can go on after that.
Verse 6, Love does not rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices with the truth. Bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. Love never fails. Love never fails. God is love. God never fails. Hmm. I wonder, I wonder what I wonder what my life would be like if I really believed that there was no wrongs on my account. I wonder how I would be able to approach the Father if I really believed that there were no wrongs on my account. There'd be no more guilt on my conscience. There'd be no more shame. There'd be no more of these things thinking in the back of my mind saying, you know what, if I was just good enough, then maybe. Or if I hadn't done this, then maybe. Or if I was better at this, then maybe. Or maybe if I read my Bible more, then maybe. Or if I prayed more, then, then maybe. Go ahead and check your account. No wrongs. Let's go back to 1 John 4. This will make more sense to you now. Seventeen, by this, love is perfected with us so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as He is, Because as He is, so are we. Amen. Yeah. As He is, that's present tense, right? That's right. That's capital H, as He is, as Jesus is. Is there any wrong on Jesus' account? <coughs> nope. Is there any headaches on Jesus? No. Mm -mm. As He is, that's present tense. So are we in this world. Not, not one day. In this world. Right now. As He is, so are we in this world. I'm going to tell you something. That'll put a little air in, that put a little air in you. That'll put a little spring in your step. Now you can run to the Father anytime you want to. Amen. Anytime you need to. Amen. You don't even have to need to. Just go. Yep. Just want to. When I realized how much he loved me, I, I want to spend that time there all the time. I want to be, I never want to be away from him now. Now that I know he's not mad at me part of the time, and you, you see, here's the thing. Y'all better go sing. <laughs> here's the thing. We'll think this is what this is what religion will say about this message. Well now, you can't just tell people there's no uh, there's no You can't tell them there's no repercussion for their behavior and their sin. You just can't tell them it don't go on their account because then they'll just say, hey, well, it won't matter and we can just do whatever we want to do. No, listen. God ain't gone soft on sin. Here's the reason that it ain't going on your account. Because 2,000 years ago, it went on His account. Amen. It went on Jesus' account. Yeah. He's the one that had your record. He switched records with you. See, that's why it says, as He is, so, so are we. we. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. You're not operating on your record. Mm. Oh, you got one. <laughs> I'm not that naive. <laughs> I got one. Doesn't mean we live our life and never sin. It means that we, it doesn't go on our account. It doesn't separate us from God. It doesn't separate us from His love. And when we need Him the most is when we've got access to Him. Yes. yes. Religion will say, well, you've sinned, and obviously that's when you need Him the most, but nah. Oh, I can't look upon you with sin, and you're a sinner. Now you're separated. Nah. 
Come on. Let's use our brains. The one that loves us, and when we need him the most, he's going to hide from us and turn his back and separate? Nope. Nope. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is true. Love takes in no account of wrong. I'm going to tell you, if you walk out of here with the revelation and the light coming on of knowing that your wrongs are not put on account, you live the rest of your life in freedom and power and love and you... Yeah. Guilt and shame and condemnation is what holds us down. That's right. Guilt and shame and condemnation is the root of most of our problems. Right. And let the devil knock on your shoulder and whisper in your ear and tell you that uh, now I know God could heal. I know God could bless. I know God could do all this stuff if you go, oh, yeah, forgot about that. Yeah, maybe I'll keep working on it. Tell that rascal to get his lies and get on and go. Because you ain't operating on your account no more. That's why they call it the good news. That's why they call it the good news. Amen. The word gospel means good news. That's right. If somebody's telling you something that ain't good news, that ain't the gospel. That's right. Say God is love. God, God is love. love. God is love. <laughs> I, I just have an idea that if we could just get a glimpse of who He really is, all our opinions and all our things that we've thought about Him and all our beliefs and all the things that religion has taught us about Him will start falling away. I believe the meanest, honoriest, furthest away they think from God when they see Him in His true self will come running. Amen. That's right. I want to be one who reveals His true self. Yeah. I want His true self to be because He's good. All the time. He's good. He's love. I'm just going to quit. Woo! <laughs>